Hello, my name is Dean Robinson. I'm the Household Hazardous Waste Coordinator for the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services. In this portion of your solid waste operator training, operator training will be all about batteries. So why batteries? Why are we so concerned with those? Well, one, they contain heavy metals, which are highly toxic to the human body. They also contain corrosive acids, which are dangerous to us and the environment. And they're really good at getting into the environment and us. I'll give you a quick example. Oh, and the chemistry, battery chemistry is always changing. Every time I look at an article on a battery, I learn something new. It's an emerging technology. So let's take a look at what I call disproportional contamination. Uh, if that trash can on your left side of your screen represents the whole solid waste stream, that little shadow at the bottom, one half of 1%, that's batteries. But leachate from those batteries makes up almost all the mercury contamination under drinking water and over half the cadmium contamination. So when I said it's really good at getting into the environment, that's what I meant. So today we're gonna to talk about a couple of different types of batteries. We're gonna talk about wet cell batteries, also known as lead acid batteries. Most of us are familiar with those. We're gonna talk about those annoying little button cell batteries and the different kinds that they have. And we're also gonna talk about dry cell batteries. <clears throat> some of which are rechargeable, some of which are not. So let's start off with lead acid batteries. Most facilities do collect these. Um, this is just, it's a block of heavy metals in an acid bath. Uh, you wanna keep these in good shape. You don't wanna crack them. Uh, most places they're a money maker, so you do wanna collect them. Uh, the biggest problem I see is where these things are stored. Um, even if you're palletizing them, you think you're doing a good job, but you're putting them right next to where the loader drives by 25 times a day, or you're putting them out in a parking lot somewhere, it's just a matter of time before somebody hits them. Uh, try to keep them away from high traffic areas. Also take a look at the bottom of this one, there's something called a sump pallet. Uh, if there is a leak, it's supposed to collect in that pallet so you don't have to do the cleanup. These people have chosen to put a piece of plywood down to totally circumvent that awesome countermeasure. Uh, so if you do have a sump pallet, definitely use it, but make sure you're using it correctly, not like this. Let's talk about collection. This was, this looks like it started off as a good idea, but the problem was is it wasn't managed correctly. They left this to residents uh, to do whatever they want. If you look, you can see some ammo cans in there, a lot of computers. I think I see something that looks like a pet carrier, possibly a tackle box. No idea what's in them. If you're going to set up a drop-off thing like this, one, have it in a high visibility area so you, you can see what people are dropping off. And two, don't make it this big so it doesn't get completely out of hand. And here's a much better, more manageable example. Uh, this is small enough where it can handle probably one day's worth of batteries of people dropping it off. You can keep it right in front where employees can see it uh, they can you see somebody going in there, throwing a computer in there. You can say, hey, what are you doing? Uh, most importantly, it's mobile. So if you have to plow or if you need more space, you can just pick it up and move it. The only two things I would recommend is add some signage. I don't see signage here. It's possible it's out of frame. But the bottom of it is plywood, which is not an impervious surface. So if there is a leak, it's going to go through the plywood, possibly leak out of the plywood and onto the ground. So maybe a little bit of secondary containment, maybe a small metal tray or something in there would make it perfect. Let's talk about button cell batteries. Uh, the main ones you're going to see, there are many more, but the main ones are mercury oxide, zinc air, and lithium is the most popular one right now. Uh, they all have that little rubber gasket, and that tells you where the positive and the negative poles are, just like on a regular battery. So you've got a plus and a minus. All batteries are universal waste, so we can treat them as such. Um, most of them, especially if they contain mercury, so treat them all as universal waste. You definitely wanna take these. You don't want to just throw them in a pile because those plus and minus poles, if they touch, you can create a short, you can release heat, you can start a fire. Again, we're gonna talk about that in a little bit, but an easy thing to do is you lay out a strip of tape, you put them all on there, put another layer of tape, and you make what we call the button cell ravioli. That's a good safe way to collect them. If you're looking for a place to take all your mercury containing devices and batteries, uh, this may change by the time you see it, but the state always has a recycling contract. Um, it varies between one and two dollars a pound depending on what the market rate is. 
but you get a little bucket like this. It's one gallon and you can put all your mercury containing devices into it. Uh, you don't have to use this. You can get a five gallon bucket as long as it's labeled, like we talked about earlier in another presentation. You can put all those in there, accumulation time one year, remember to fill out your label and you're good to go. And let's talk about rechargeable batteries. We're gonna come back to lithium in a minute. I didn't touch on the lithium button cells, but there's a reason for it. Uh, but regular rechargeable batteries, you have to know these nomenclatures, uh, nickel cadmium, those were the early ones that we had way back in the 80s. Now we have something called lithium ion polymers, totally different chemistry. You don't have to know so much what they're made of, but you have to know that these are rechargeables. Yep, there's a lithium polymer right there. Those are the weird looking ones. It basically, they've taken all the protection and the hard casing out of it. And that's why most of you, if you have a newer phone, that's why you can't open it up and take the battery out anymore. Lithium polymers. All right, some rechargeable batteries are very easy to identify. You can look right at that and say, hey, that's a rechargeable battery. Others of them, not so much. Everything in this picture is a rechargeable battery, but you wouldn't know it unless you actually had the package to look at. So you've got to be good at reading that small little fine print. Uh, then there are these weird, bizarre things. These are rechargeable batteries that recharge off of other batteries. So you can actually plug this into your laptop and charge your nine volt. These are starting to disappear. Uh, you don't see them very much anymore. But these, these are brand new. And these are designed to be a stripped down battery with as little weight as possible. Uh, and what really drove these was drones, drone technologies. Uh, you're gonna start seeing these as the uh, drones become more popular. A lot of hobby shops are taking these now, but they're gonna be coming your way soon, I promise. So if you don't have a battery recycling program, you might wanna consider it. Call to Recycle is the one that we use at New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services, but there are others too that I encourage you to explore. And they'll work with you based on the volume of how many batteries you're collecting. They can send you a whole pallet's worth of them if need be. Now we're gonna get back to those lithiums. These are lithiums that don't recharge. So non-rechargeable lithium batteries, maybe out of a flashlight or even the little button cells. Lithium batteries are very dangerous. Lithium reacts with water and moisture to release massive amounts of heat. Um, most of your battery fires these days are started by lithiums. They just had a Tesla in New Hampshire that caught on fire twice last weekend. Uh, it caught on fire on the side of the road, wasn't even in an accident. Uh, they towed it to the salvage yard where it burst into flames again, just from the rain and the moisture in the air. If you're managing lithium batteries, you need to be undercover. You need to be ha handling them with gloves. Uh, children who swallow these, they put their lives at risk. Uh, the battery goes into a little child's stomach. Uh, moisture gets in through that little rubber grommet. Next thing you know, the lithium is heating up their stomach contents to over 100 degrees. Uh, dangerous stuff. Do not take it as a joke. This is also the reason why all the toys today, the battery covers have to screw together. When I was a kid, battery covers did not have to screw onto the toys. Uh, now they do. So non-rechargeable lithium batteries. This is a little demonstration. I encourage you, if you uh, ever venture to DES and you attend our battery workshop, this is not microwaved. This is just a lithium button cell battery soaking in the juices of a hot dog it was after two hours. Like I said, all batteries are universal waste, but you should probably handle this one like a household hazardous waste. It's a little more dangerous to you and it's definitely dangerous to your facility, especially if you leave them out altogether, untaped on a damp day or worse outside, you're gonna have problems eventually. Now we'll talk about non-rechargeable alkalines. If you're an older person like me, this is what we grew up with. Any alkaline battery that was manufactured after 1995, there's really nothing hazardous in it. It's hard to find recyclers for these because there's nothing of value left in them. Uh, some recyclers take them, but these can be landfilled. But I also encourage you to manage them correctly and tape those poles. If you throw nine volt batteries into your waste and it's not completely discharged, it gets damp, it can heat up and start a fire just like any of those other batteries. Cell phones, uh, some cell phones, the batteries come out, but if somebody turns on a phone, leave the battery in there. The safest place for it is in the phone. Uh, you can either put it in your battery recycling program box, or there's plenty of other places. There are alternatives. There's Lions Club, I think, takes them. 
uh, different shelters take them. So do some research in your community and uh, let people know where they can drop those phones off. So preventing overloads and fires. You definitely want to tape these. You can put them into Ziploc bags. You don't want to throw a handful of them in a Ziploc bag. That defeats the whole purpose. You need to have one only. Uh, people tell me, yeah, but Dean, it gets really cold and the tape freezes. There is this stuff called Frost King. This is a tape that's, uh, it's adhesive works till 10 below zero. Uh, if it hits 11 below zero, you have my permission to stop collecting batteries. Here's a fantastic sorting station. Um, it's indoors, it's undercover. Uh, it looks like it's protected from the weather. You can see they have drop slots for alkalines, rechargeables, and lithiums. These are, they're probably managing them separately. Some things you want to think about. Uh, if you're setting these stations up, you want to have gloves. You want it to be well ventilated. Batteries are designed to off gas. If you leave them locked up in a Tupperware or something and you open that Tupperware, you get hit with this blast, this chemical smell. You don't want to work in an area where this is going to be building up. So have a window, have a fan, something. Eye protection if need be. Uh, we're going to make this video available for you in our resources. Um, the presenter will let you know where it is. This is something that everyone should consider posting to their social media twice a year. Uh, daylight saving time. This is when we change the batteries in our smoke detectors. And this gentleman uh, used to run a, a presentation company for kids where he would teach kids uh, important lessons. It was called Kids in Character. And he stored a battery, two nine volt batteries touched, and uh, it burned a large portion of his house down. He got permission from the fire department to walk through, do a public service video. It's a little gut-wrenching to watch, I won't lie, but it really drives home the importance of managing your batteries correctly. So I encourage everyone to watch it and post it to your social media page if your town or facility has one. So let's play a little game. What's wrong with this? Well, this was a collection that went bad. It was left out in the weather. It corroded. Uh, I'm really surprised there wasn't a fire. Maybe there was. Looks like it's been around a while. Again, keep your stuff out of the weather. Don't throw it all in piles like this. Looks like there's stuff in there other than batteries, too. Two. All right. This is it, it's contained, it's in secondary containment, it's undercover. Problem is the poles are not separated. So you've got batteries touching the positive and negative poles of the other batteries. Again, way to have a possible discharge. Also, if any of you have worked with confined space, if you're going to have to lean down and put your head down in there with those fumes, that could be an issue too. Again, a lot of things to think about here. And there's this. This is actually, I believe all the metals and acids have been removed from these, but you'd think they'd be sorting them a little bit better. I'm hoping these are just the plastic boxes that are going into be, being recycled, but I thought it was a cool photo. Two, how about this one? So again, undercover, protected, but those poles are not separated. We can't see if the floor is impervious or not. If it's a tractor trailer, it might have a plywood floor. Uh, if there was a leak in the back, how would you know? You wouldn't know until it was too late. Uh, something could leak back there for years, depending on the size of this container. Hopefully, you're not supposed to store them for more than a year because they're universal waste. Again, not everybody follows the rules. Also, this might be a confined space issue. Remember I said all those batteries are off gassing. Here's a better example. The poles are separated, right? They're not stacked too high. They're on a pallet, they're off the floor. The only thing I can think to make this a little bit better is it looks like the back of the pallet is right up against that wall. You just left enough room back there to where you can walk back and inspect for leaks. This would be perfect. Um, maybe put one of those sump pallets underneath in case there is a leak. That would make it 100%. All right, let's play a little game, a sorting exercise. Uh, we've got some batteries at the top. On the bottom, we have three options. Can it be recycled? Is it universal waste or is it solid waste? Let's start with the little Duracell on the left. It's a non-rechargeable. Doesn't have anything toxic in it. Where does it go? Oh, we're gonna put it with solid waste. On the top here, we have a backup battery. I think that's for an emergency light system. So that's something that's been recharged for years. It's been up in the ceiling. So it is a rechargeable battery. Anything that's rechargeable is recyclable. Those are valuable metals. Uh, Dwalt drill battery, we know that's rechargeable. So we can recycle that. 
What about the phone? The phone has a battery in it. We can also recycle that. Ah, and look at this. This is a, actually a real battery somebody brought in. It is a Cat9 battery from 1959. On the back of it, it says it contains lead and mercury. Where do you think that should go? It's not a rechargeable. Yeah, that's a universal waste, definitely. And this battery, all batteries are universal waste, but if it says lithium on it, like I said, you can treat that as a household hazardous waste if you wish to. But again, you can put it into universal waste. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you learned a lot.